Hey, hey everyone, I'm back. Thanks for having me, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for those of you that subscribe to the channel. Uh, I don't say it enough, I always forget, but if you like the videos and you find the videos helpful, please share them with somebody that you think could use this information, share it with a friend, family, um, you know, upload it to your social media pages, comment, like, uh, subscribe to the channel. It's going to help us to get this message out there to help other people and help deliver and save other people from narcissistic abuse, which is what we need. Um, hey, hey, guys, thanks for coming in. Uh, we need we need to spread this information, you guys. It's 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 crucial information that needs to be spread so that we can stop their operation. Um, okay, I hope you guys like the title. Uh, <laughs> oh, Aaron, thank you. You're my healer too in so many ways. You have no idea. So many of you are. Um, I hope you like my title um, in parentheses. Who cares, right? <laughs> <laughs> who cares <laughs> okay but I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you right now how the narcissist thinks okay yay my moderators are on <laughs> thank you for being here Nathan and Tish um so so happy to have you on as my moderators and helping me out with my channel and, and other things that you guys have done for me. And I'm so, so happy that you're a part of this. Um, so thanks again for being the moderator. Yay. You know that, um, oh, Aaron, you don't have to do that, please. <laughs> no, um, I wanted to say real quick, um, oh, I, I thought to do this and I totally forgot, uh, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and I will make sure um, I will make sure that I get the list of all of you that have recently donated to the channel. And for those of you that sent me um, gifts, early, early Christmas gifts, uh, thank you so much. I'm, I've got a list of you to thank too. And I don't want to just thank the ones I remember right now and not the others. So I'm going to put that together. So I make sure I thank you properly because that's rotten of me to, um, to not, remember to thank you uh, on the channel and do a shout out to you for that. I really appreciate that, guys. Uh, I don't say it enough and I don't beg and I don't ask, but your donations, as small or as large, help my channel to grow and help me to put the money in the places that it needs to go. I am, um, I am gonna have to bite the bullet and start to do more professional type of videos. I'm realizing it's just, I'm at that point now where um, I'm still gonna do videos like this and we're gonna go live and do the things I do, but I'm also gonna step it up a notch and uh, and make some more quality content uh, that's gonna help, again, get things out there to the right people. I, I, I've been avoiding it like the plague and it's it's here now, I have to do it. So, okay, I'm done babbling, I know. You guys are here to, you guys are on this video to hear what the narcissist thinks of you. Now, I get a lot of this in sessions. People want to know, why does the narcissist, why would he do this? Why would she do this? Who does this? Well, they do. And I'll first explain to you guys why it's so difficult for people like you and I to fully understand why people do, why people like them even can think and operate and act this way? Well, because they have black and white thinking and they are ill, okay? They're ill in here, okay? There's there's literal, you know, you guys, I know I talk about it enough on the channel. There's literal demons operating within them that they have picked up along the way that they have not gotten delivered from, they've not done the work, they've not been saved, okay? And uh, they are making up what they think in their head and how they're, they're, they're portraying that to others and how they're, they're uh, answering people, how they're, they're, they're treating people and, and how they're going about making decisions in their life. And it's not to blame the demons because they've, 
you see guys they've already made a pack with the demons they've already they've already co you know they've already uh you know decided for themselves that this this works for them this works for them okay it works for them uh you will find all the self-proclaimed narcissists out there talking about why they choose good-hearted people otherwise known as empaths or super empaths okay why why do they choose those kind of people because guys they look at you as a fresh target fresh meat someone very quickly that they can get inside because they see you okay they're in the they're in the you don't believe me you're in the grocery store and they they can sniff you out they know they know there 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 she is there he is ah right there they they know okay they have a sixth sense they're aided in this demonic operation to getting them to understanding how this works and they can see you guys i know i sound crazy but they can they see a really strong person. They see a strong-willed person. They see a person that has a big heart. They see a person that's vulnerable. They see a person that, uh, you know, just got out of something bad that they're trying to heal from. They see a person that has taken three years worth of healing. And they say to themselves, aha. Yes. Yes, exactly, Nathan. So they, you know, they... They see you, you guys. They see you. You, on the other hand, are going about life. You don't, we're not going around in life thinking about who's targeting us, who's after us, who wants our money, who wants our, our, our uh, big heart, who wants something out of us. Every single person in a narcissist's life, they're looking at as, what, can, what do I get out of that person? What can I get out of that person? Some of us are just really good listeners and we'll sit and we'll listen to the narcissist BS for hours on end. Uh, some of us, they've got something, there's something in it for them. They found out you had a real wild inheritance or that you make a lot of money. Or uh, that you're someone that would probably easily marry them so they could get an insurance policy out on you. Exactly, Carrie. It is a sad existence for these narc farts. <laughs> exactly what you wrote and is the truth. Yes, and they and they will. This is the, the sickest part about these covert narcs. The covert ones are the most dangerous because they're mirroring you. They're mirroring your personality. They are pretending that they're just like you, that they experience empathy and love. They have the, you know, the, the capacity for love and, um, and all those good, happy, po you know, positive qualities, love, empathy, uh, you know, uh, helpfulness, supportiveness, um, and and they're you're you're believing that you found yourself a soulmate. This is the most horrible part about it. You believe that this person is your equal in the and how you guys both think, feel, act, operate. And in all actuality, they're just mirroring you. It's a big fat game. It's a big lie. And so for many, if not most of you, you get out of these things with this person after they finally pulled their stunt and you're like scratching your head like, wait a minute, who are you? Who is this person that just pulled the stunt that I literally watched for such and such amount of months or years be this way? And you're, and you're scratching your head like, who is this person? Who are they? I always want to remind you guys, it's not what people say, it's what people do. And what they're doing, you must believe them. They are telling you who they are by what they do, not by what they say. Okay? That's what you got to go by. 
feelings, emotions, take those and throw them out to the garbage where they belong. You got to work now with logic and rationale, logic and intellect. Because what they think of you, you guys, I'm going to tell you right now what they think of you. They think of you as someone to use. Someone to gain instant access to validation, attention, uh, a sad sack ear to listen to their, cr their crap, their, their baloney. Someone that uh, doesn't see them because they, they, see, they see that you don't see who they are. They can see it at first. And so they're, that's when they're working on you with the love bombing and, and they're getting you uh, enmesh in their story. They're getting you to uh, look at the world through their, their eyes and all the things that have happened to them. And yeah, a lot of it is true of what happened to them in their childhood and this, that, the other thing. But they know that you are going to be a part of what they are using at that very time until they either jump over to the next because guys, they are not ever going to be satisfied with anyone. Nobody satisfies a narcissist. Nobody. The, you, you all, everybody has a shelf life with a narcissist. These are not people that have had long time, long-term friendships. And if they have, the poor sad sap has no clue who this person is. And I've seen that happen. They could go for, for 20 years. Uh, they know how to play the person that they knew, they knew since they were a child. They know when to kind of come about and pretend to be the friend and when to kind of back off and then when to kind of come back. They know. They studied you. They had a, they had an upper hand on you and your life from way back in childhood. So they know how to work you and how to continue to keep this, oh, I've had this childhood friend for a long time. No, you haven't. You're not a friend to anybody. You wouldn't know what it's like to be someone's friend if that's the last thing God asked you to do. So, as I've got my cup here, L-O-V-E. Love, love. Guys, your definitions of everything, most importantly, love, is not theirs. I'm going to say that again to you guys. Your definition of love and compassion and caring and empathy and uh, acceptance, non judgmental, you know, approach to people, they look at you with all those qualities and they say to themselves, part of my language, I'm going to swear for a second, what a dumbass. What a dumbass. That's what they're that's what that's what they're saying to themselves. This person and their happiness and their they have no clue who I really am. They have no clue I am using them. I am just they are just a tool in my shed that I take out. Because I need one right now. I need a little pick me up. I need uh, I need someone to make me feel like I'm great. And they're the perfect candidate. But they are so such a dumbass. Because they are falling for what I'm giving them. They're falling for it. And they know they're putting on this show for the time frame that they have to talk to you, however long that time frame is. They know they're putting on the show, okay? And they know it's a show. And they know that when they hang up, they have to, that now they're another person because they were just a different person for you for however many hours you guys just talked. Now they hang up and they're a different person for whomever. They look at all of, all the people in their life as placements this one goes in this placement right now this one goes over here in this placement this one is for this and that one is for that and i decide when i take each one out of their little box that i've put them in and placed them in 
And I recycle people, the narcissist says. I recycle them. Oh, haven't talked to this one in a while. Bet you I bet you I can get them right back where we started. Bet you any mom. Then then they sit their sadistic ways, they sit back and they think, I know how I'm gonna do it too. And I'm gonna get them to let me back in. Cause this will be fun. This will, be, this will give me something to do with my time. I'll just tell them everything they want to hear. Cause I know them. I know them like the back of my hand. So I know exactly what they want to hear and I'll tell them what they want to hear. And then, uh, you know, that'll be fun to watch them fall and, you know, be flattered by me all over again and infatuated with me all over again. That's what I'll do. <laughs> exactly, Tessa. <laughs> he is the dog man. But the unfortunate part is empathic people that actually can exhibit compassion and empathy and uh, that you feel sorry for people. You want to see people in a good place and not a bad and you get emotionally invested. That's what happens. You get emotionally invested. And in that emotional investment, you, you're not thinking this way. So you can't understand how another person person that looks, talks, feels like a human being could be this way. So you can't wrap your, guys, I, I said before in my videos, it's, it's probably a really good thing that you can't figure them out. And I don't believe, I really don't believe as a person that can exhibit empathy and compassion for others and, and really have a big heart, you can never understand how they think, feel, act, operate. Because if you could, I mean, wouldn't that mean that, you know, you, you get it? The only thing I get is what I have seen and heard from all of my clients. It's the same thing over and over and over again. They're all the same, guys. They're all the same. They operate from another level that, and another place in this, on this planet that we've not been. We don't want to go. We can see it, but we'll never fully understand it. Never. Because it is mind boggling, Christina. You, we can, exactly. How do you comprehend this? You don't. They want you to think you're crazy. It's the other thing they're doing. Okay. You want to know how, the, you know what? They want to think. They want you to think you're, you're, you're really emotionally unstable. You're crazy. Misfit basis. That would be a great, um, that would be a great video topic. How do you deconstruct a demon? Guys, I want you also to remember something else. Please keep this in mind because this is the truth. This is the harsh reality of my world. There are things I do not go on the worldwide internet talking about. Why? Because we can't let the narcs know certain things. We can't let them know our strategies, our ways of thinking, what we're going to do to shut them down. There are so many things I have gone to, to do a video about and I stop myself going, nope, if I go and do this video, they're going to they're gonna see this and then they're going to up their game. So once again, Here's where my coaching comes in very affordable and very uh, appropriate for what you might want to do if you're involved with a narcissist because there's a lot of things I don't share because I can't. We've got narcissists, you guys, watching our channels every day. Like flies on crap. All right? They're flies on crap. And they're sitting around and they're watching our channels because they're trying to get as much information as possible to keep up their operation. So I don't give them what they want to hear and, and, uh, and what our strategies are and going to be going forward. I'm not going to give them that. So keep that in mind. And uh, don't forget that I will expose a lot of things that you guys can be doing. 
in your day-to-day -day operations as well as your long-term plans to making sure you're protected. I can't share that on the internet. I can't. We've shared enough. These narcissists have gotten enough information from our channels to know how they can maneuver their game and shift their operation, all right? Yes, and um, we do have the Lord. And there's more I can tell you guys about that. That literally works beyond measures to shut them down. You guys don't even realize how simple it is. But um, having said that, what do they think of you? Nothing. They think nothing of you. That's what they think of you. They think nothing of you. You know what you are to a narcissist? So what? Got all these pieces of paper right here. Just gonna find another replacement. <laughs> That's what they think of you. That's what they think of all of you. I got you guys writing into me. What about my narcissistic child? What about my narcissistic parent? What about my narcissist? You know, I, I I recognize that I've had this in my life. A uh, narcissistic aunt, a narcissistic. Um, this is what I saw growing up. This is. They're all the same, guys. It's the same technique you're going to use with all of them. They don't care about you. They don't give a crap about your opinions on them. They don't. The minute you see them for really who they are, you. They're going to hate you. They hate you when you see it. They hate you. You're in for it now, buddy. Oh, how dare you make them accountable? How dare you point out what they did and said that was crap? How dare you? dare you expose them? How dare you? Oh. You're in for it. Guys, they live in shame-based dispositions. They're in a shame-based place all the time. There is a place inside of them that is so dark and so evil and so just void. That's where they, that's where they dwell. And as Misfit Basis just said, yeah, they might have the duper's delight. Oh, well, many of them do. You know, they got the sideways smirk as they're telling you like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Haven't you guys all seen that? The sideways duper's delight smirk. We all have. <laughs> They're not sorry. They think you're an idiot. Honestly, they think you're an idiot. They think you are beneath them. And listen, guys. When they first come to you, and they see you as this like pillar of strength, light in their life, um, person that's gonna lift them up. Understand, they're gonna do this thing with you that they lift you up. And why do they lift you up? Why do they do it? What do they, you know, what it's called love bombing? They bring you up. So that they have the power to bring you down. They kick those pegs that they put you up with. And they, and they take you right down. Because they're saying to themselves, I have the power 
over you. I decide how you feel about yourself. I, I have that power and control over you to let, to dictate to you when you're going to feel up and when you're going to feel down. That's why they're doing it. So you're looking at them as this person on a pedestal because you feel like you're seen and you're heard and you're, you're understood. And they're looking at you like, what a dumbass. What a dumbass. You're a dumbass. Because as soon as I get you right up to where you possibly think you could be, I'm going to kick those, all the pillars down so you're right back down where you started. And I got the power and control over that. Not you. You nitwit. That's how they see you. They hate themselves so much. So much, you guys. They hate themselves. That they want you to hate yourself too. It's the name of the game, guys. It's what it's all about. And we've got this stuff going on out here. Mothers doing this to their daughters. Fathers doing this to their sons. Children doing this to their mothers and their and their fathers. Children's uh, spouses doing this to the mothers and fathers of the of the you know their mother and father in law, putting putting them through hell. Friends, friends of twenty something years finally getting exposed for who they truly are and what their true intent was for you all along. I mean, we've got every dynamic you could possibly think of in which they are they are showing you what they really think of you. They think you're an idiot. You're you're a speck of dirt. You're interchangeable. You're 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 uh, disposable. When you catch them or you call them out on something or you ask them what they meant by something, you're a rotten rotten person. You are the devil. <laughs> All right? You're the devil now. Okay? You are the narcissist. You're such a narcissist. They're going to tell you you're the one. <laughs> this is their trick. Oh, and wh what's an empath going to do? Am I? Guys, don't fall for this banana in the tailpipe caca baloney. You know who you are. You didn't just go ahead and do all kinds of work on yourself to listen to some person that you know now. You know the truth. You saw it. God revealed it to you. They exposed themselves. And now you're like, okay. Don't even scratch your head about it. You know what they were. You know why they came in your life. Oh, Pitbull, Pitbull Bill, thank you. I'm happy I've been there for you. You guys have been there for me too. All of you. Guys, I worked with a young girl today. One of my youngest clients. It's a blessing for me to work with the young people because we have got to get them to see so they do not follow in the footsteps I just went down for 20 years, okay? And many of us did. It's a blessing to me. I praise the Lord Jesus when I get off a, a client call that they, they want to talk to me because I say to myself, they don't have to go, they don't have to experience what we did. They do not. We just have to get them educated. And guys, this young woman, okay, 20 years old, or she might be a little older than that now. I, I think she's 22. Anyway, she's young, okay? All we need to know is she's young. She is so beautiful, you guys. Beautiful from the inside out. She's like a... A little cherub. She's like a, you know, born and raised 
Grandfather was a pastor, still is. Came from a very beautiful Christian home. Well, we all know how this goes, don't we? Can't tell you the amount of people I work with. You're targeted. I said before, I'm going to say it again tonight. The devil's not going to go after people that already, you know, he's got them under, the, under his, uh, his, his demon wing, his fallen angel wing. He's not going to go after you. Those people, he's going to go after the people that know morals, values, standards. He loves that. He loves that. Okay? And he's going after those people, especially that love the Lord and that know that there's a, there's a power greater than them, greater than themselves. No, he wants you to think you're the greatest power over yourself. He wants you to think you're your own God. You're God. You're amazing. That's what he wants. Oh, if I can get you into selfie. You know, I was talking to her today about the selfie society. She's saying, oh, God, it's so bad out there. These men, these guys I'm meeting. I told her, I said, you know what? You're going to meet these guys for the rest of your life. You're going to be married, okay, with kids. You're going to be in the workplace, and one's going to come in. One's going to come into your workplace 20, 30, 40 years from now. And he's going to tempt you and your marriage and your life. You have to be prepared, you guys. Just because you have the knowledge now in narcissism does not mean that they're all going to go away. They're going to even come on in even more trickier than the last one. It's going to be even more of a trick. It's going to be even more of a, of a what the heck? this you the least person i would have expected i thought was so kind and caring and innocent and loving and you're doing this yeah so it's not to make you guys fearful it's it's to make you guys on guard okay and please like i said to her today do not lower your standards just because you feel like you've done this fight Oh, I can't find any decent person out there to date. I can't find, I can't find anyone. Maybe my, my morals, values, standards are too high. Maybe, maybe I got to lower them because I, I, I can't get anyone that wants. No, guys, that's the wrong way to think. Wait as long as possible until you find that person that is can reciprocate the kind of love you have to give to another person on all levels. If you have love, if you have love, you have respect, you have uh, compassion, you have care, you have the that ability to give that to somebody, that capability, and don't settle for these people that don't have the same morals. Or, don't lower your standards. Just don't. Wait as long as you have to. And in this day and age, you guys, I'm going to tell you something else. Be comfortable with being on your own because you just don't know in this, this, this world that we're living in. It's, it's pretty brutal out there. So you got to get comfortable being alone. You can't settle for scraps. You can't settle for someone's word. You have to watch what they do. You have to get to know someone. You cannot be going over people's houses that you just met. You can't do it. You can't do it. Um... Ladies, I'm going to give you this for some food for thought. This is for my ladies right now. All right. Now, I get it. It's bad out there. Okay. But I'm going to tell you something. When you tell a man, okay, this is, this is not just, I am not targeting one or, I've heard this so many times. Okay. That's why I need to bring this up tonight. A man can say to you, oh, you know, come on over. Um, 
come on over to my house. I want you to see my house. I just built the shed. Now you just start talking to this guy. And you feel the need as a decent woman to say, okay, I'm going to come over. I'll let you show me your new addition to your house and um, let you cook me dinner or something like that. But I just thought I'd forewarn you, I don't do anything with people or do any of that stuff. You know, um, I'm a Christian. I don't do that stuff. So if you think that's where this is headed, think I'll forewarn you right, right now, that ain't going to happen. Guys. A man hears, she's coming over to my house. I'm sorry. That's what he hears. He hears she's coming over to my house. I don't care what she's saying. It's what she's doing. She's coming over to my house. Which means I got a shot to try to put a move on her. She's in my, my house. Don't do it. I don't care what age you are, guys. I don't care how old or how young you are. A real gentleman... A real gentleman you won't even have to ask is going to take you out publicly on dates for a very long time. And if that's how you're going to weed them out, that's how you will weed out the men from the boys. The boys want you to come, come on over, hang out. You know, that's why I hear these young, the young girls I'm working with. Come on over. I'm having people over. We're having a bonfire. Come hang out. And even my, my, my uh, clients that are older, don't do that. If this person can't take you out on a date, you are better off staying at home alone and not bothering with this person because you're going to separate right there the frogs from the, you know, you're going to go through all these frogs. Don't do it. This is how you know. If that person can't take you out on a date properly and, and respect that you want to do that for a very long time, oh, hey, I'll meet you for lunch this week. I got a lunch break. Oh, um, maybe next week I'll meet you on a Friday night after I get out of work somewhere. Don't do this thing where you invite each other back to each other's house. This is how it's all happening. You have to you have to guard your heart nowadays because people pretend to be these good-hearted, warm gentlemen, or even women. Even the women have these 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 motives. Don't do it. That's how you're going to separate people. All right? That's how it should be. You should get to know someone in a public setting. I truly believe this for about three months. No one goes to each other's house. No one meets family members. And if they're trying to push to meet your family the first week you're dating, hello! Woohoo! No. Red flag. Wow. Like, they're, they're going too fast and there's a reason for that. Okay? So... I wanted to make mention of that too. Like a lot of you guys are back out there dating and you need to hear it. Do not accept crumbs from people. If they can't do these kind of things and step up to the plate, you don't want them in your life anyway because you know it's going to lead. It's going to lead to this, this, all this crap, more crap in your life. You don't need it. You guys are better than that. I need to, I need to just reiterate. You guys are the most amazing people I know. Seriously, the people on the channel, the people I'm working with, you're incredible people. You don't deserve to take crumbs from some, you know, bozo that can't even properly take you out and treat you like a, a human being. No, don't do it. All right. This is what they think. I'm telling you tonight what they think. And that's what they think. So if you want to avoid narcissists in the, in the future, you have to think about this stuff. You got to put your lines in the sand, your boundaries, and you have to know what they are up front. I don't care how good looking she is. The amazing body on this woman. For my male subscribers, listen to me. She's a snake. She's a snake in the grass. And she wants to take you on her little joy ride. All right. Do not believe any of it. You know her by her fruits. What is she doing? Where is she going? You know, I don't care 
how good looking she is, you guys. Don't fall for her. Get to know her. Get to know who she is as a person before you're thinking about that thing. Which I know, guys. I know it's hard, okay? I know. Especially when you male uh, subscribers have gone through abuse. And you just want to feel love again. That should be the last thing on the table for you guys. The last thing that should happen with a relationship. You should have, you should make sure first and foremost, you've got yourself a best friend. Okay. That should be the most important thing you could find in someone. And you're not going to know if you have a best friend unless you take the time to know if that person's even worthy of being your friend. Okay. And at that which point, you know, at that point, you can take it further of what you want to do there, but you don't know people. My best friend, Johnny, he has been my best friend since I was 22 years old. When I was in my 20s, he would look at me with this kind of like, you know, he'd look at me and go, Trace, you got such a big heart. You got to guard it because people wear masks. I don't want to believe them. In my 20s, just like my client today, she was telling me, I can't believe this stuff about people. I just want to see the good in everyone. Oh, God, I know. I know because I was her. I was her and I as well did this. But this got me into a lot of trouble, you guys. A lot of trouble. And if I can avoid, you know, if I can help you guys avoid that kind of trouble in your life, it's that you can't do that. You cannot look at the world with rose-colored glasses thinking you're going to make the world a better place. You're going to fix this person. You're going to help bring this person to Jesus. You're going to be that one that's like that constantly, you know, um, that is this person's constant in life. No. Let them prove to you that they're your constant in life. And then maybe you can open up. It does not, you don't, you don't just start opening up to someone. I mean, I just even learned this recently. You can't. You cannot. People have ill intent, malignant, malicious intent for you and your life. And you wouldn't even know it. And when they see you got a big heart, you're an open book, you're an honest person, they will exploit that. They will make up things about you because they know they'll never be a person like you ever in their lifetime because they don't want to be. They think you're an idiot. Here we go back to the video title. They think you're an idiot. You guys want to know what they think? This is it. I really do hope and pray this video Share it with people. Share it with as many people as possible. This is the kind of message that the young folk to the older folk need to hear. You have got to hit the restart button, reset the boundaries, reset your line in the sand, reset who can come in your life and who cannot. And that takes time. Some of the people in my lifetime I never would have ever expected this from were the worst, the absolute worst. So once again, this falls on us. This is our problem, our mistakes. And we can't keep continue to make them and expect to have different results. That's my message tonight. Thank you for all of you guys for engaging. Thank you for my moderators for continuing the conversation and engaging with folks and for helping me with my channel. Uh, I appreciate you all very much. And uh, once again, the, the favorite videos of mine, share them with people. Share them with a friend that you know is struggling. Turn people on to what is really happening with these folks and the narcissism that is very, that is running rampant amongst this world right now.
We got to put an end to it. And the only way to do that is to first and foremost, educate people. I am Trace Face. It is time. We all face the truth together.